Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you could play Sunday Morning by Maroon 5. And we're going to start off on a D minor chord, and we play D minor. And we're going to kind of talk about a lot of different ways to kind of play these chords. But one way would be to do a first finger on the high E on the first fret, second finger on the G string second fret, and third or fourth finger on the B string third fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, that sounds a D minor chord, and it sounds really, really sad. Now on the D minor, you may want to kind of kind of play around with kind of a D minor seven idea, where you could do first finger over the E in the B string, second finger on the G string, second fret, and make that a D minor seven. Or if you dig on bar chords, you could do this as kind of a fifth fret bar with first finger, second finger on the B string on the sixth fret, third finger on the D string seven, and the pinky on the G string seventh fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a D minor seven. Or you could lift off the pinky of that and make that a D minor seven chord. Or if you're a little bit more adventurous, you could use a D minor nine. And the way you play D minor nine, first finger goes to the D on the third fret, second finger on the A string on the fifth fret, and the third finger over the G and the B and the E string. And that sounds a very, very hip, cool D minor nine shape. Or if you kind of dig on power chords, you could use a D5 power chord for this, where you do first finger on the A string on the fifth fret, third finger on the D string on the seventh fret, kind of strum just the A and the D string. So you can make that very jazzy or very funky, or you can make it very rocky, depending on how you're feeling. And then from the D minor, we're going to be going to a G major chord. We play G major. First finger goes to the A on the second fret, second finger on the low E string on the third fret, and third finger on the high E string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord and it sounds really, really happy. Now you might also dig on putting the third finger on the B string third fret, pinky on the high E string for that G. Or you may dig on a G7 chord, um, where you do the first finger on the high E on the first fret, second finger on the A string second fret, third finger on the low E string third fret, kind of get a G7 chord. Or if you're digging on bar chords, you can do the G major as a third fret bar, second finger on the G string fourth fret, third finger on the A string 5th fret, and the pinky on the D string 5th fret, and make that a G major that way. Or you could lift off the pinky and make that a G7 chord. Or if you're digging on something a little bit more jazzy, you could play something called a G13, where you do the first finger on the low E string on the 3rd fret, second finger on the D string 3rd fret, third finger on the G string on the 4th fret, and the pinky over the E and the B string, and I'm kind of muting out the A string with the first finger to kind of get the G13 chord going on with that. And then from the G, we'll be going to a C major chord. We play C major. First finger goes to the B on the first fret, second finger on the D string on the second fret, third finger on the A string on the third fret. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, that sounds a C major chord. It sounds really, really happy. Now you may also dig on kind of lifting off the first finger and making that a C major seven, or adding in the pinky on the B string on the third fret and making that a C major nine or another way to play C major nine. We'd be doing first finger on the D string second, second finger on the A string on the third, third finger on the B string third, and the pinky on the high E string third fret. would be another cool way to kind of work the C. Or you could work this as a bar chord by doing a C major as a third fret bar, third finger over the D, G, and B strings, kind of all together. Or you may dig on a C major seven there, where you do third fret bar with the first finger, second finger on the G string on the fourth fret, third finger on the D string 5th fret, and the pinky on the B string on the 5th fret. Which sounds a C major 7 that way. Or if you're digging on something even jazzier, um, you can make it something called a C major 13, where you take the first finger and bar over the D and the G on the 2nd fret, 2nd finger on the A string 3rd fret, and 3rd finger over the B and the E on the 3rd fret, and strum in the A string and the high E string for a C major 13. So there's a lot of different ways that you could work that, actually. If you're digging on the power chords too, you could do a D5 power chord to a G5 power chord where you do the first finger on the low E third, third finger on the A string fifth for the G, and then kind of taking that shape and then moving it to the C. So first finger on the A string third, third finger on the D string fifth. So you may want to kind of play around with that too. D, G, C, C. So there's a lot of different chord possibilities for that D minor, G, C. Play around with with you know find a way it works for you and run with it but a lot of times with a song like this i like to use something called a strum pattern now you could work just downs on them. d minor g with kind of four downs and then c with kind of that eight down idea d minor g i'm kind of adding in a little bit of right
by hand game. So you could kind of play around with that one with those chords too. Or a lot of times I like to use the strum pattern. And one of my favorite strum patterns for a 4 4 like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So if you took the D minor and just tried that a lot, you'd have down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, which would be really slow for this tune. But you could kind of work that D minor and the G with a down, down, up, and then do the whole pattern on the C. So you have the D minor, down, up, G. times with a song like this too I like to add bass notes and a lot of times on that first down the down down up up down up you can throw in a bass for the chord so on the D minor root position you have the D for the bass on the bar D's you have the A string for the bass on the G you'd have low E for the bass and on the C you'd have the A for the bass so you know I kind of play around with it, with it that way too D minor pattern I would really gravitate to with the song is something called a 16th note strum pattern. And what I mean by that is if you're tapping your foot to the beat, right now we're dividing that beat into two parts with our down, down, up, up, down, up. One, two, one, two, and that's called an eighth note. What a 16th note is, is where you divide that beat into four parts. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And one of my favorite 16th note strum patterns is long down, 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 up, up, down, down, down. And what I mean by that is if you take the D minor, do it down for four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's how you, you, what you're doing on the first beat. And then on the second beat, you're doing a down on one, down on three, up on four. So you're going one, two, three, four, down, 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 down. And then on the third beat, you're doing an up on two, down on three. So you're going one, two, three, four, one, two, down, one, up, down, one, two, down. And then on the last beat, you're going down, up, down, up, right along with the one, two, three, four. So down, 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 down. So all together, you got down, 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 down. So what we can do is take the long down, down, down up and do that on the D minor, the G, and then do our whole pattern on the C. Or if you dig on this, you can kind of take the down. Minor G with the up down, down up down, and then C with the whole pattern. So you can kind of half the pattern in different places too to make it a little bit kind of a cool video through that. Or you can just work that down, down, down to G, down, down to C, down, 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 playing third on the A string, first fret on the D string, second fret on the D string, and then second fret on the A, first fret on the A, open A, and then second on the A, third on the A, third on the low E, second on the A, third on the A, second on the low E, second on the A, third on the A, and then first fret on the low E, and then we do another first fret on the low E, and then third fret on the low E. And then if you wanted to, you could kind of tag this with a little tag where you could go third fret to fifth fret as a hammer on the low E string, three on the A string twice, and then back to three, five on the low E. So three, five, three, three, five. So all together, you get kind of three, one, two, two, one, oh, two, three, three, two, three, two, two, three, one, one, three, three, five, three, three, five, three, 
one, two, two, one, oh, two, three, three, two, three, two, two, three, one, one, three, and then we kind of hit a C major chord, but then you'll hear this cool little push to a C sharp note actually in the a, on the A string fourth fret to kind of lead us into the D minor. This is a change you could actually throw in in other places too through the song, um, but but that can kind of get backed up with an A major chord. And we play a major first finger goes to the D on the second fret. Second finger on the G string, second fret, and third finger on the B string, second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an A major chord. And it sounds really happy. Now you may also want to think about lifting off the second finger and making that an A7 chord, or you could readjust your fingers and kind of add in the pinky on the high E third. That could be a cool way to kind of work the A two, or you could kind of follow the A major power chord or bar chord, where you do fifth fret as the bar. Second finger on the G string six, third finger on the A string seven, and the pinky on the D string seven. If you strum all those together, that sounds an A major chord. Or you can lift off the pinky of that and make it an A seven chord. Or if you're digging on the, the G thirteen shape, you could do that same shape for the, the A and have first finger on the low E string on the fifth fret, second finger on the G D string on the fifth fret, third finger on the G string on the uh, the sixth fret and the pinky over the B and E and make that an A13. Kind of a cool way to do it. Or if you're digging on the power chords, you could kind of do it as, as an A5 power chord where you do first finger on the low E third or fifth fret, third finger on the A string seventh fret, and kind of that as an A5. Or if you really want to bring out that C sharp note, you could kind of take that A string fourth fret with the first finger and add in the pinky or the third finger on the D string on the seventh fret and kind of get what I would call an A3 slash C sharp, which means an A major with a third, which is the C sharp, but with the C sharp in the bass. So it's an A slash C sharp. So you can work it as kind of C5, A3 slash C sharp if you want to really bring that out and to kind of lead back in that C, A3 slash C sharp. And you can even kind of imply that in through the song. It might be kind of a cool way to kind of work it. part of the tune actually you kind of have that C with kind of half our strum pattern and then the A slash C sharp with half the pattern and you could kind of add it too doing first finger as a bar over the D G and B third finger on the A string on the fourth fret and kind of strum just the A string or the B string and kind of get it that way kind of C A slash C sharp so through that whole breakdown you got kind of that C D sharp E B B flat A B C G B C F sharp B C F F, G, G, A, C, C, G, A, C, D sharp, E, B, B flat, A, B, C, G, B, C, F sharp, B, C, F, F, G, and kind of hitting that C, A slash C sharp to lead back to D minor, G, C, and then you're kind of back into your first chords. So you can only kind of play around on this line in different ways to kind of work that. And the whole song, actually, if you know other licks around these chords, too, Free to kind of throw them in. But that's the basics of how you can strum through Sunday morning by Maroon 5. So, good luck!